Charles Rudabaugh, and I'm back. I've got some really powerful tips for you how to survive your first year in network marketing. So check this out. I'm going to go through 10 tips. We're going to split this video up into two. So here's the top five. This is very powerful. I'm going to give you some powerful information right now that you wouldn't figure out for five years, even 10 years of doing this stuff. Most of these things I learned from my mentors right away, and I was like, oh, that's a good one, and I wrote it down. Well, I've heard When he said that, I was like, oh, man, that's a good one, and I wrote it down, and it's been with me for eight years, for seven years, for five years when I figured this out. So here's number one. Number one, it's very hard to recruit other network marketers. Why? Well, probably because you go about it the wrong way, probably because you're an amateur, probably because you're not making much money with your company, probably because you're blasting other people and being negative and trying to tear down their company. Well, what happens if I tear you down? You want to build yourself up. So the only way you can recruit another network marketer is, number one, if the timing is right. they got to already be disappointed with their company, having issues. It's not going the right way. They lost their momentum or whatever it was. The first time they lost momentum or the company's making a different changes. Like I know there's a, a energy drink company right here in Carlsbad and they're trying to get away from network marketing and go to like online sales and which is network marketing is what made them successful. It doesn't make any sense. So the people in that company are all leaving. So anyone in that company, like they're open to opportunity, right? I think of Verve or something. So, um, you just want to understand that you recruit another network marketer not by showing them your paychecks. A real professional network marketer doesn't care how much money you're making. They want to know how much money the top person in the company is making, and they want to know the compensation plan to know how much money they can make. They don't care about how much money you're making because they're, you, don't, you don't make their money. right? So that's really powerful. When you're brand new, don't go try to recruit a bunch of other network marketers. Just show your friends, show your family, build trust, build credibility, make money. And when you're not an amateur anymore and you've got skills, now people are going to come to you and you're going to build these relationships over time and you might know another guy in another network marketing company for three years finally his company blows it you know backs off you know goes down makes the wrong decision and he's like looking for opportunity he knows you've been consistent with your company and now you now you get him so that's how you got to play it don't even you want to be positive you want to encourage people you know don't tear them down if they're in a great if they're in a company and they like it and they're making money with it it's great they're I'm not trying to take someone away from something that's working for them, but if someone's in a company that they're not excited about that's not working for them, of course I want to show them what I do. But if they're not open to opportunity, it's kind of a waste of time to sit down with them and have like a mind's better than yours. It doesn't make any sense. You know, so they won't see it, you won't see it, and you're wasting your time. Go get new blood. Here's another one. This is a this is a really powerful statement. When you're in network marketing and doing network marketing, you love network marketing. But if you're in network marketing and not doing network marketing, you'll hate network marketing. What do I mean by that? When you're in it, you joined up. You joined up in your company, but you're not talking to anybody. You're not showing the business to anybody. You're just thinking of all these people, and then you're getting anxiety over whether people would want to do it or not. And then it's not working for you. You're not making money. And then you're getting more discouraged and you're like, oh, this isn't working. Why do I want to get people into this? It's not even working for me. Right? And so if you're in it and not doing it, man, it could be you can be discouraged. You're done. And you're not going to like it. You're not going to like feeling like you got to go do something all the time and there's always people everywhere to talk to and you don't talk to any of them because you're scared and now you're feeling fear all the time and you're living in fear and now you're feeling like a loser, like a, a failure, you're feeling like a fear-based person and you're just like, screw all that. I'm just going to go back to my job, have fun, go play, playing on the weekends, right? Why go to this, why even get stressed out about this every night, you know, when I am get off of work and worry about making calls, right? So... The reality is, is if you don't have a system, you don't have the right language, you're not confident with what to say, you need to get those things, figure that out, get confident with what to say, learn something to say that you can say to people, start talking to people, and present. Presenting is the funnest thing. You can have the worst day around. You present the business with passion, man, you're fired back up. So if you're ever feeling down, go present the opportunity. You're going to get jacked up and fired up again and get your belief back. So present the business, get out there and do it. If you're in it and you're doing it, you're going to love it. Everyone in network marketing who's making a lot of money, it's because they're doing network marketing and they love it and they'll never go back to a job and they'll bash jobs and talk negatively about jobs for the rest. And, and they can't understand someone that wants to go to a job, but the person that goes to the job is because they never did network marketing when they were in network marketing and they're negative about it because they weren't doing it when they were in it. They were watching other people do it and they're just bitter that they didn't make any money. So be in it and be doing it. That's important. Okay. Number three here, when you're brand new, Use the word excited 
five times. It's so funny. When I my first presentation ever, it was my like third week in the business. I hadn't gotten a paycheck yet. I had one on the way, but the, you know it takes a process. The company corporate has to process, you know ship get it out and stuff. So, anyways, three weeks. I'd made a paycheck, but I hadn't received it yet. So I couldn't with integrity tell people, oh yeah, I've made money, right? I haven't, I hadn't made money yet. And so I'm I'm got my my main leader, you know, my mentor coming to do a presentation. He said, if you have 20 people there, I'll show up. And I was like, okay, and we got 19 confirmations for that night for the home meeting. And he's like, you know, okay. And I call him up in the afternoon, hey, we got 19. And he said, 19's not 20. I got another meeting with 22 confirmed, so you're going to have to do the presentation. And I was like, like scared. I was like, what are you talking about? We got 19 people. This is the most, you know. And um, he, he was just like, look, don't worry about it. And I was like, what if they ask me how much money have I made? And he's like, they won't ask you that. If you don't think they're going to ask you that, if you think they're going to ask you that, they'll ask you. Don't worry about that. Just present with excitement, with passion. He's like, here's what you got to do. Just remember this. Don't worry about your presentation. Don't worry about what to say. Just when you get started in the introduction, this is all you got to do and everything will work out fine. Use the word excited five times. And I was like, what kind of a hokey pokey, like, you know, Advice is this. They're not going to ask you if you don't think they're going to ask you. Don't worry about what to say in the presentation. Just use the word excited. I didn't get it, right? But I trusted him. I was like, okay, you're the one who's a 27-year-old multimillionaire. Okay, fine, right? I got in front of the room. I was like, you guys, I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to share this information with you. You know, I'm just excited. I'm more excited than I've ever been. This is just so exciting, and I'm ready. to. I just want to jump right into it. And everyone's like, they're, they're freaking, they're like excited because I was excited we got, out of those 19 people, we got 11 signed up. My very first presentation ever, 11 people signed up. And I was disappointed because not everybody signed up, right? Until that point, everybody was, I did all these one-on-ones, one -on -one, and like nine people in a row had joined. And that was my first big meeting where a big group, a whole meeting, and only 11 joined. And I was like, how come everyone's not joining? And I was disappointed. It was, right? I should have been excited about the 11 that joined. It was over half, right? 50% closing ratio. Anyways. So, use the word excited five times. Everything will work out. That's all you got to do. And, okay, here we go. Number four, here's your attitude when you're talking to people, when you're prospecting from the people on your list. Here's your attitude. I don't give a crap whether anyone on this list joins. I just want to get them off my list. And that was something that my mentor showed me when I was very, very beginning, my first couple weeks in the business, he had, you know, prospected, gotten four, got five numbers that day. I remember he had five numbers that day on a little piece of paper. He had gotten some numbers. He was like, hey, I got to make some callbacks and get him invite to the meeting. You want to listen? And I was like, yeah, hear what you say on the phone, right? And he looked at me and he looked at the list and he's like, I don't give a shit whether any of these people get involved. I just want to get them off my list. He made the phone calls. He booked three of them. Two didn't pick up. The two didn't pick up. He was just, he was angry about the ones that didn't pick up because he's like, they're still on my list. I just want them off my list. Yeses are good. Noes are good. I don't care. I just don't want to live in la la land, thinking I have more people than I do, than I really do. I want them off the list. They're in. They're out. Next. So that's a really powerful tip. Don't worry about it. Just call them. Just sort in out. Just get them off the list. And number five, just to wrap this up here real quick. Being good is bad, but being duplicatable is phenomenal. I'm going to say it again, because this is powerful. If you get this, you, this is a tip that will make you a million dollars. Being good is bad, but being duplicatable is phenomenal. Because if you're the best, no one can copy that. No one else can do that. It doesn't matter how good you are. It matters how much opportunity your people have and how good they can be. That's what this is about. So being duplicatable, having success in a duplicatable way, something that other people can copy that don't have to be special, they don't have to be educated, they don't have to be salespeople or networkers or have a huge influence or you know contact base, just anyone. Kids, old people, fat people, short people, skinny people, anyone can do it. You can duplicate what your leader did. You're going to be successful. Your leader's duplicatable. You're going to have success. So have a system. Be duplicatable. Don't focus on being great. Focus on being duplicatable, and we'll see you on the next video.